Since I addressed slightly, because I know you're very exercised by the fact, Mark, that this cult of celebrity is now swept into the political arena, and as we've seen with Gordon Brown, he can't do it. He went yeah. onto YouTube, but it's like he was auditioning for the Olympic yeah. Championship yeah. of Great Britain. I, I, think, I, think, I think it's very inspiring. I think, I think, could have done I, I think in, any, in any sort of uh, political party, you need grey heads, you need a balance, you need youthful enthusiasm, but you also need some sort of balance. The fact that David McBride, you know, turned to a group of people with absolutely no idea about the digital space to get them, they're, they're, oh, Obama did it, we'll do a bit of that. There's a lot of really too isn't going in it, and it's desperation. Whereas a solid, straight, thinking, political sort of person within, within Gordon Brown's camp is not there. It's just pulling gimmick. Yeah, but he's, he's the star, Mark. I mean, that's the way it is now. You know, he's the star in our organisation, Tony Blair is the star. <coughs> David Cameron is a PR man desperately trying to invent himself as a politician because he wants to do stuff. I totally agree. The point is, you, you where you have to have a group of leaders. You go on question time, as I have a few times over the years, and you talk to them before you go on, and you talk about the subjects of the day, and they say this and they say that. You go on the show, and they say totally the different. <coughs> because that's their political party, and that's what they've got to say, and that's what they've got to do. So it's all an act, it's all bloody public relations. It's got less and less and less to do with reality. At least show business, we know it's nonsense. <laughs> it's true, it's absolutely, it's absolutely true. And the, the, the shocking thing is, if you look at, um, if you look at the Liberal Party, to a certain extent, the number 30 pounds. Does anyone? Does anyone? You can't see, they, they shove in the you know, to run it, you know, young, youthful base. More people were turning on and listening to um, yeah. so kind of, um, so, um, it's a bit of a game. But it's image over reality. The same as papers, particularly tabloids, is sensation over substance. Because that's what sells. And this whole celebrity thing comes under that. It's easy for celebrities because they're desperate to be famous. So they're doing anything and saying anything, and it doesn't matter because for most of them, there's no such thing as bad publicity. They were rather that someone was destroying it in the paper. And not right about that at all. And yet stars, the genuine stars, people like Paul McCartney, well, they want to be out of the papers as much as they can. Especially if you manage to have had an else. Yeah, <laughs> yeah I, think, I think certain certain people can build their, their uh, you know, build their have a balance between their public life and their professional life. They do. I mean the major stars have a wonderful time with it. No one knows what they're getting up to most of the time, apart from their PR person. He normally finds it hugely amusing. No, I do. But that that goes with the same. Because you've got the away confidence away. of talent, and that's the that's the issue. Those people who haven't got talent have got to continue to project and propel themselves into the public, and that's where they're forced out because it's the it's the fishism that they are to look at. If you were to be given, if you were asked by Gordon Brown, and God help us, he needs some help, to give him some advice, what would your advice be, Mark? <coughs> I'm I'm never go on YouTube again. Uh, I, I think I think he I think he I think the first thing I do is find somebody to give him a political call. Some somebody out there that's a, a you know that will get away from all the sort of people keeping their knife behind their back ready to stab him. You know, when the moment comes. Of course we never ever um, push away. Uh, a party leader just for election. It never happened before. But all that, they're, they're all shut in their eyes by the back, ready to make a move. Because why would they do that? But actually, you need some solid thinking, some grown up thinking inside of that to be the, not image, not YouTube, not, not next suit you're going to you know, dig into, yeah. not a walk away from the problems. I mean, if anybody had the biggest PR disaster the last couple of weeks was the Gurkhas. I mean, if you saw Joanna Lumley coming in with those yes. Gurkhas, New words, alarm bells are said, let's sort this out. Yeah. You know, I mean And the tabloids in full flow. You know, these are genuine heroes. Yeah. And you're yeah. saying we don't want them anymore. Yeah. And it's shocking. Max, what would you what would you say to the Prime Minister? Gordon's been grabbed by the Gurkhas, right? <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> I love the Gurkhas. I mean it is is uh, I've got a lot of time for it now. But he's got no chance because he can't handle the media. He doesn't know it, he can't do it. It's why Tony Blair was a great operator, Bill Clinton was a great operator, Barack Obama, I believe, is a great operator, David Cameron is desperately trying to be. So, um, and uh, it's got more than one way to go. But, uh, 
um, it, it's, it's not going to work. You know, he hasn't got it in here. You know, uh, to do what is necessary to be in his modern team. A star. Yeah, you've got to be a star now. Yeah. And, and if you look at those that are the biggest, you know, they are stars. There was something charismatic about them, and they were very good on television. Or forget your politics, forget what you think for a moment. The way they worked, Blair's very, very good. Bill Clinton, I mean, Bill Clinton would still be president now if he wanted to, because he was just so incredibly popular in spite of Monica and all that microphone training. You know, the one. Last, last <laughs> question, because then I'm going to throw it open to the audience. We, Susan Boyle is the celebrity of the moment. Uh, Mark Lukowski, are you worried about her? Yeah, I am. I am worried about her. I'm worried about the sort of type of people when, if she doesn't win, Britain's got to happen. And if there isn't any weapons to go, she'll be seized upon by the second, the lower degree of agents. The people, not the press agents, but I'm talking about the agents who all trying to take their 20% or their 10%. And it's, you know, it's not far away from that Ricky Gervais scene from The Office where he goes to that nightclub and he's on the group of people. They, there's people fall away from you. When you're no longer useful, when you're no longer the ability to make that money out that time, people disappear. And I just hope that somehow she's kept her feet on the ground. Because if she doesn't, you know, it's going to be, it's, it's going to be drier time. It must have been difficult for her to keep her feet on the ground because it's been a whirlwind of publicity. Every day. Yeah, and, and, and she loved it. Um, but I think she'll be okay. I mean, you know, I think in terms of her life and what's gone on, this is exciting for her, it's wonderful for her. Um, but I think she's quite a well-rounded lady in all ways. And I also think that Simon knows that he's got to be, and everybody around him, <coughs> be responsible. Um, because he is the person created the opportunity, created the program, so therefore you have got to look after people like that to a degree. And anyone that's been successful in those shows normally gets pretty good management, pretty good guidance and advice, um, which, you know, which comes with the package, because otherwise it would reflect badly on everybody involved in the program. I think, I think it's not so much those who write at the top. I think it's the sort of people that sort of fall away and fail that have had a huge lump of interest for a period of time, but not to, them, to maybe top four, because the other people caught up with that don't get through to, to the, the nurturing treatment that you get from Psycho. They fall away. And they're the prey of these sort of people. I mean, these kids I was talking about the other day, you know, there's four or five websites represented that met the people on it, and it was sent around all over the country to do things. You know, and I just thought, what a waste of time, you know, and it was, that's a sort of, Corrosive sort of eating up, and I don't think we're going to truly see those effects for the next five or six years. And then we begin to see those people tumbling away. And there's some, um, I mean, you know, uh, you look at Richard O'Brien, you know, the male, you know, particularly, you know, Richard O'Brien, famous guy from over 60s, 70s TV series called Man About the House, you know, in fact, very difficult, beautiful guy, very handsome sort of man that didn't age particularly well ended up having, you know, some sort of dementia issues and, you know, sort of an active home in, on the south coast and whatever. It's just Richard O'Sullivan. Richard O'Sullivan, sorry, that's Richard O'Brien. Sorry, Richard O'Brien's still going strong. Still going strong. I saw him the other night, he looked fine. Richard O'Sullivan, so. Yeah, but Richard O'Sullivan is in Brinsburg House at Twickenham and he suffers from alcoholic dementia, which is very sad, but, you know, whether he was an actor or a footballer or not, but what I'm saying is that they're always positioning, the media position, those glittering pictures. Rightly so, the guy has suffered. And I think that's, you know, that, that's a sort of slight, that's a sort of image that we like to see before and after. Sullivan, and Bridgeford House is a good example. Britain's Got Talent, the <coughs> from Britain's Got Talent, raised one and a quarter million pounds from Bridgeford House to take care of variety acts over the last two years, and this series will make it even more. So, these were perhaps the people like Richard O'Sullivan who benefited greatly from. And from should talent, be allowed to see as, as opposed to the media who haven't given them a penny on the day <laughs> <laughs>